and today we're going to be talking about uh, managing daily attendance in PowerSchool. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone can hear me, so if I'd like you to raise your hands within the webinar, please, so I can see whether my sound is working for us. Perfect. Thank you very much for that. I am going to drop all the hands so that if there's any kind of questions coming up, I'll be able to see them as they show up. Uh, I will have uh, Doris Kitts working with me to help answer questions along the way. She will be here shortly. Uh, in the meantime, I'm hoping uh, you are able to see the bit.ly or see the front page of the PowerPoint. It should show you the bit.ly on there. I've also included it in the chat, so if you want to grab it from the chat, you can do that as well. Uh, today, we're going to be working about an hour and a half, unless we get done a little bit early, so we are kind of go with that time frame. I will be jumping in and out of Power School for uh, some of our discussions. So if you could please uh, ask your questions through the question panel, and we'll try and stop along the way. Okay, so let's get started. So basically, what is daily attendance? So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to uh, deal with tardies, where they are considered present, but they've came in late, or they're leaving early. We're going to work on changing a single day attendance. We're going to talk about a field trip code and, and where is it and why is it not there. And changing attendance, whether it's multiple days or maybe it's multiple students um, in a single day or multiple students in multiple days. And at the, towards the end, there are a few slides of tips and gotchas that we're going to kind of go through. So if everyone is okay with that, let's kind of start out. Um, what is the bit.ly? I didn't get it and didn't see it in the chat. Okay, Marsha, I am going, um, Doris, can you write that in? Do you have it? Okay, awesome. Doris is going to uh, help out with that. Thanks, Marsha, and I hope you get it shortly. Uh, what is daily attendance? So. As a big picture, it's where we are going to have attendance taken for each child just once a day. And it's going to be taken in only one period of that day. And that period is called the attendance bridge period. And we set that up uh, on all the bell schedules so that on every type of day we have, there'll be one bridge period that we can take attendance for. Uh, there's also the ability to uh, sign a, a student in and out based on that one daily uh, period attendance code. And in North Carolina, we use attendance codes, the 1L or the 2L. So we'll talk about that. And when you're on the daily attendance screen, so as you're looking at an attendance screen, you should be able to enter that data right there uh, in addition to opening up a student record and, and fixing it there as well. Uh, and just, I know this is not about meeting attendance, but we can actually go to the meeting attendance screen to troubleshoot and look at some attendance issues. So even though you are a daily attendance school, you can still use that meeting attendance page to take a look at some things. Okay, so what stuff has to be set up in order for your attendance to work well? So one, we're gonna look at years and terms. And I know that in the last few weeks, we've been really um, pounding this uh, into all of the schools and the, and the LEAs, your years and terms need to be set up. They have to have the first and the last day of school with no gaps in between, no padding of dates. So when one a term ends, the other term begins the very next day. 
And for all LEAs and special schools, uh, program schools, we need to have the first and last day of every year set up, um, including all of those program schools, back to 2001. So we've been working on that with every kind of webinar we've been giving. So back to 2001, you need to have a year in term, a full year term set for all of those program schools. Uh, in the calendar, all your calendar days must be set. They have, we have to definitely have the first and last days in the calendar. They have to be in session days. And I'm not sure how many of you are um, in track schools or year-round schools, but when we're looking at the calendar, your track boxes either all need to be checked or all unchecked. So if you are not a track school, it can be either way, either all of them check or none of them checked. So it has to be one way or the other, but it has to be consistent. If you're a track school and you know who you are, then obviously you check those boxes as, um, as needed. The PMR interval screen, we have to make sure that those dates um, are set up in our PMR pages. And we're also going to talk about that as part of the bell schedule as well. All right, I'm going to go into a little bit of depth about FTE stuff. So as far as I understand, and we've been working, there's only going to be one FTE set per school. And this says there is an exception here, but we, we as a general rule, every school needs to have just one FTE. If you do really need to have more than one, we're please going to ask you to go through Ozella with that, but we really, is, it is not recommended and not, um, not a foregone conclusion. We want everyone to have one. So with that, it kind of goes back to what I said on the prior page. We have to have all the program schools and all of your regular schools within the LEA having FTEs set up. That does have to go back to 2001, um, and it has to do with the transfer student record process. It's requiring that information to be there for all schools back to 2001. Okay, I'll get off that little horse for a minute. Every student has to have an FTE defined in their current year. All of them, every one of them. So you might need to find out whether uh, what the FTE ID is by looking in the DDE table, using DDE, sorry, the FTE table. Or you could do a student search to find out um, if they don't have the correct FTE ID, and we're going to go through those pages, or we can just do a search to find out if the student is missing an FTE altogether. So that's what some of those uh, dots are telling us. So the student search in that third dot, FTE ID equals with nothing after it, will result all of the students without any FTE assigned to them. The second dot is uh, looking for a student FTID that is not equal to the FT, uh, FTE ID for your particular school for your particular year. And I'm going to show you how to find that FTE ID, um, and that's what we're going to do in that first dot. One other thing about it before we jump in is that you make sure that you're looking at the inactive students as well. So make sure you use that uh, forward slash when you're looking at all those searches in uh, the steps above so that we are dealing with all our inactive students as well. These can be fixed in mass if you use the student field value function once you find all those kids that don't have it. Uh, and so it'll be an easier way for us to grab it and uh, mass change it. All right, let's kind of look at it and what can we do? So how do you find the FTE ID? This is kind of a, a, a trick. Um, 
there's a t two ways to find it. One is you can just go into DDE and go to the FTE table and find your uh, your FTE for your school. So you're going to need your school ID and you're going to need the year ID to make sure you're looking at the correct record. But this is another way. So at the um, start page of PowerSchool, if you scroll down, so you're going to be at the school level, you're going to scroll down the left hand side, go to school, and then you're going to click attendance. And then from within attendance, you're going to click full time equivalencies or FTE. So once you uh, go there to that page, you're going to click on the name of the FTE. So maybe it's full time, um, whatever the, the title is. And then you're going to see this particular page come up. So you're going to see the edit FTE code. So I don't know why my screen keeps showing that black line. I apologize. So the FTE code, it shows you the name, your default attendance mode, your default attendance conversion. Um, but I want you to go up and look at the URL. So I kind of made it a little bit bigger in this particular picture. Uh, as you scroll across the URL, after the question mark, there is letters F R N, Fox, Robert, Nancy. And if you change those three letters to M, C R Mary Cat Robert. It will actually open up that table so you can see the table um, field name. So I'm going to say it one more time and then the next page is going to show you what it looks like. So you're going to go to the URL once you are in, once you have opened the FTE record that you found under the attendance full-time equivalencies um, area. You're going to change the letters after the question mark, the letters FRN, you're going to change to MCR. Okay, we still got problems with the PowerPoint. What's up with that? Um, would you want me to go back to the Rebecca, are you okay oh, now? I sent it to her she separately. Did? Okay. I, just, okay. I just sent it to her okay. again. Not quite sure what that problem is. Um, uh, Rebecca, let us know if you don't get it, okay? Thanks. Okay, I apologize. All right. So here we are. This is what we're changing the FRN to the MCR. I'm going to go to the next slide. And when you do that, changing that to MCR, this is the page that displays. So it really is showing you the record and you could have done the same thing if you've gone to DDE and did a search for your school ID using your school ID and your year ID um, to bring up the same page but this is the ID that you're looking for so there's my school ID there's my year ID um, and that is the name of my full-time equivalency record that I'm looking at. So my ID is F4202 in this particular case. So then you could use that. So I'm going to go back a couple slides. So there's my FTE ID. So now I can say in my search panel at the start page, I can say FTE ID uh, bracket and bracket. So the left bracket, right bracket means it does not equal. And then you could put in the 4202. And that will give you all students that do not have that 4202 uh, as their FTE in their particular, in their record for this current year. And don't forget to use the, the forward slash. So it should be forward slash FTE ID, left bracket, right bracket, 4202. Or you could just say, like I said before, do the FTE ID equals blank, and then you will find the kids don't have any at all. Uh, whereas that second dot will do a search and say, 
I don't care what they do have. Tell me all the kids that don't have the one I need. Okay. Any questions about the FTEID stuff? We're good with questions right now. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. And we're back at then now. Cool. All righty. So now I'm going to continue on because there's still some more pre set up stuff. We're going to make sure you're looking at everything that you need. So we need to look at our attendance preferences. And then I'm going to jump into PowerSchool in just a second. But the attendance conversions, we need to look at that. In North Carolina, we don't use period or code. Uh, we definitely use the code um, only for the student or the people using attendance tracking. And we only use the 2A code for that. So your people, you know who you are if you're using attendance tracking. We're going to use the code for that particular instance. We need to set up two tiers under the time. The minutes should be 50% of the instructional minutes per day. And you're going to set up a separate attendance conversion for each bell schedule, each type of bell schedule that you have. All right, so let me jump into Power. Whoops. Go back there. All right, I'm going to jump into Power School. So I'm going to change what I'm showing you. We have one question, and we may need to get some clarification. Jackie, I'll ask it, and then you let me know if we need more. Okay. It says the exception shown in the start of the list they exempt if students have IEP. We do, so that means I am exempt. Correct? She's new. So I think maybe we need some more. Uh, yeah. Um, exceptions shown in the start of the list. Okay, I'm going to need a little bit more um, detail. Mindy, I may have to get back with you. Were you able to hear Doris okay? She read it out. She read the question to all of us. Um, all right, let me jump back to the previous slide really quick. Okay, so this is the screen I think she's looking at. Uh, exceptions to this are for students with an IEP. So oh, for the one FTE. Okay, so I, I'm going to ask. I'm actually going to point you to Ozella because she'll be able to explain to you when it's okay to have that other FTE. But as a general rule, um, we only want you to really use one FTE. So, Mindy, I'm going to point you to Ozella. Her, her name and email address is on that slide. Um, we have one more question. Can't find the chat box with the bit leak. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll send you Okay. Again. All right. I hope you guys can you'll get it. And either way, even if you uh don't have it right now, you can follow along with me and you I'll show it again toward the end of the of the presentation. Okay, so Okay, I'm going to jump back into Power School so you can see. All right, so I am in Power School and I wanted to show you oh, attendance. We are going to be looking at the reports for attendance. We're looking at the daily and the meeting and uh, mostly daily and consecutive absences. But right now I am going to scroll down on my left hand side and I'm going to go to school. 
And now under school setup information, I am going to, first I'm gonna show you the full-time equivalency. So there's the FTE that we're talking about. In this particular training database, their FTE is called full day. So I'm going to click it. It's going to open it up. So here in North Carolina, our default attendance mode for our daily folks are gonna be daily. And we always use time today for the conversion. So unless you're doing attendance tracking and for some specific reason, uh, the general rule is use time today. And then below are the grade levels that are going to be using that FTE. So normally, every grade level should be checked that's in your particular school. And if you make any changes, you can click Submit. Uh, I'm just going to go back. I'm going to use my breadcrumbs, and I'm going to go back to School Setup. And now I'm going to go to click Preferences. So this is where we are um, in making sure things are set up correctly. When you're doing attendance, even though you're daily, you're still going to check the meeting box. So the meeting box, because because actually when you're taking attendance once a day, you're still taking it in a particular period. So that period really is a meeting time, a period. So you're there, you're going to put the attendance there, and then that's going to have a bridge. It's actually going to connect it to the daily attendance bucket, I'll call it. So you're going to take the attendance in a period, even though it's just once for the day, and then that's going to get transferred to the daily bucket. And I'm Italian. I wish you could see my hands because my hands are showing you what's, what's going on. Um, so make sure you have the meeting and the daily checked. Never, ever, ever click audit attendance records. Make sure that is not checked ever. Uh, that just raises havoc with... Well, the system down well, here creating a log. Yeah, the log, and it's huge, and it gets bigger and bigger every day. So we never, ever do that. The default attendance page, what do you want to see first, daily or meaning? Uh, we could always switch in between, but normally our daily folks leave it at daily. Enable multiple character attendance codes. So yes, we do that because our attendance code are two characters long. So we're gonna definitely have that box checked. And then meaning and daily bridge. So the bridge, I usually keep it at two way to keep the records in sync. Um, one way is all right, let me kind of explain the, the sync process. And actually, it's in the pictures in the slide, so I'll show it to you when we get to the slide, but we'll, we, we'll talk about that. The next two options are where you can choose how many days, either before or after, that the teachers can take and modify their attendance through Power Teacher. So they take their attendance through Power Teacher, and here you can edit and tell them, are you only allowed to take attendance and play with your attendance for the current day, or do you allow them um, days uh, before and days after? The interval duration in minutes we have is zero. The calculation accuracy, we usually leave it at two decimal places because a lot of times it's um, a half day or a whole day, but then we have the kids that are leaving in early and coming in late. So we go to two decimal places. And what are we counting uh, for the period conversion? So it says count these codes. If I click the drop down, my choices are present or absent. Well, we are a negative uh, attendance place. 
So we're always going to count the absences when we're trying to configure what the daily code is. And do you want to round up or do you want to truncate? Uh, we usually truncate it off, it's fine. And I'm going to keep scrolling down. The uh, enable ADA periods and passing time deductions. So we are usually not going to uh, count the passing time deductions because we are counting the total minutes for the day. And the period that we are counting for attendance is just uh, a yes or no. Are they here or are they not here as far as the code goes? Yeah, I know it's hard that you can't see. How about that? Okay. Um, make sure they could still see it. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit farther and the deduct passing time. So we're not going to have any passing time to deduct because we are daily attendance. We're only going to take it the one time and we're dealing with just total minutes for the day. And it wants to know when we're looking for consecutive absences notification. So that means we need to track um, how many kids, how many days in a row kids are absent. So it's asking us the minimum and the maximum number of days that we want to be stored. So we're going to count up to 20 days. And, uh, and the 20 days, I'm guessing, is because that's uh, usually a PMR uh, day time. Is that an interval? Or is that no, 20 days? Just... but that's not the reason. Yeah, I'm not sure why it would be. Mm. I honestly don't know. Mm. I would have thought it would be 10. Mm. Well, well we're, we're storing up to 20 days. So the kids could be um, absent up to 20 days in a row, but we are going to have it checked every time they. Uh, meet more than one. So every time you have the threshold of one. So the threshold kind of tells you how many times. We have a report that's going to help us with this. So right now I don't have this particular notification checked. The enable is not checked. So it's not going to tell me every one time the kid hits an absence. But if I run the consecutive absences report, um, it's going to come back and look at these figures. So we're going to leave it like it is. So I'm not going to enable the notification, but I am going to be able to run the report that will help us with that. All right. So that is the uh, preferences page. Let me jump back to um, still seeing it, I hope. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint. I think I am. There we go. Perfect. All right. I'm going to jump, make sure that we get an idea of what this. We talked about period or cone. We talked about the two tiers under time. Okay, so we didn't go there yet. So let me go back under attendance conversions because that's where I wanted I wanted to show you that as well. And then the um, instructional minutes. So I'm going to jump back into Power School. And I'm going to go back to School Setup. And I'm going to go down to attendance conversions. Okay, so this is where I mean that we're going to talk about and have two tiers of time. So our full day conversion says full day. That's the FTE that we just talked about. I'm going to click on the two tiers. And this is where you're going to set up the number of minutes present um, and what counts, what constitutes being present for the day and being absent for the day. So it says if you are zero minutes present, anything from zero to 184, it's going to count you as absent. If you are present from 185 minutes and over, you're going to be considered present. So I hope that makes 
sense to you. So the 0 to 184 is going to mark a student absent. Anybody who is present at least 185 minutes is going to be considered present. I'm going to go back to my conversion. I'm going to click on the code. So the only reason I'm coming to code is for people that are using attendance tracking and we're only going to track it for the 2A. So if you scroll down, I see the 2A has a zero. And that tells me that 2A tells me that they, if they get a 2A, they are going to be considered uh, an attendance value of zero. So they are not present. And this is used by the attendance tracker. So we're only tracking the 2A folks. And if I continue to schedule, uh, scroll down, it says a regular school or any regular day. So any bell schedule in our calendar that is a regular day, it's 690 minutes are defined in our 10 period. Okay. I'm more concerned with the attendance tracking that we have the 2A set up as zero. So we're only looking at the 2A code for that. All right, I'm going to go back to my setup. And think we're okay. I'm going to click section attendance settings. And this is only for when uh, you have more than one section in the same room at the same time. So that attendance um, can be taken by the teacher in one big uh, list rather than two separate classes. So she can be able to see um, all the students in her class in one big list rather than my French three kids in one list and my French four kids in the other list if they happen to be at the same room at the same time, which doesn't really matter to you guys because you're daily attendance. But I just wanted to show you what that was all about. Okay. Any questions thus far? Good for Jackie, we're good. Just about the bitly. That was the biggest was the, the biggest, biggest hurdle question. for today. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll make sure that doesn't happen again in future webinars. All righty. I'm going back to uh, the PowerPoint. If I can get my mouse to work for me. All right. So we talk about the calendar setup. Each day has to have a bell schedule set for it. And again, we're talking about if you're not a track school, then either all the boxes should be checked or all unchecked, one way or the other. If you have a combination of the two, the system will try to think the school is a track school. Um, and you'll be able to see that on the PMR interval screen. And another, op another point is to make sure that every day that is in session actually is checked to be in session in your calendar setup. All right, let's talk about PMR for a few minutes. The PMR instructional minutes. So we have to have a number of minutes set so that our um, the principal's monthly report gets to count how many minutes that um, are in a regular day. So you're going to set that up um within your uh i'm sorry within your bell schedule you're going to tell which bell schedule is going to count it so the pmr does not use the attendance conversion so if you remember we put number of minutes in our attendance conversion but a pmr does not use that that's why we have our own little spot 
to put our instructional minutes. And the other thing I want to talk to you about is making sure that one of your bell schedules and just one has that PMR calculation minutes box checked for it. So if you go into your bell schedules under school setup, bell schedules, you're going to choose your most regular day, whatever that's called at your school. You're going to click on it to open it up. And underneath that last option says use for PMR and SAR calculation of minutes. Now it shows up blank. One of these schedules has to have a yes. It can't be left blank and all of them cannot be no. At least one of them has to have the word yes in it. And that's the only way you're going to get correct calculations for your PMR and your SIR. I've had a lot of people say that, well, I left mine blank and it's okay. It never gave me any errors. Well, you didn't get the correct calculation either. Because if you leave it blank or you say no to everything, it it looks at all of your schedules and it averages them out. So you're not going to get the same calculation that you think you're going to get. So I would find your most regular day, regular bell schedule, and set that use for PMR to a yes. We do have a request, Jackie. Someone asked if you could go over, uh, if you have a two hour delay, what would the attendance conversion look like? Okay. That may be something we want to. Uh, Look at it a little closer in a little while. Yep. Yeah, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about it in the um, delay, weather delay area. Okay. So if I don't get to it there, Marcia, we'll make sure we talk to it before we leave our conference. Conference. I wish it was a conference, <laughs> but no, just a little webinar. But I will get to it, Marcia. I won't forget you, I promise. Okay. So make sure the PMR interval uh, instructional minutes are set. And make sure at the bell schedule, one of those boxes are checked. So this is what I was talking about, about the bridge. So what happens is we have one of our periods of our day is set to be our attendance taking period. Whether you call it homeroom, whether you call it um, HR, if you just call it period one, whatever it is that you call it, it has to be at least five minutes long, and it has to count for ADA. So it has to be included in our total instructional minute time. So it's part of our instructional minutes for the day. The start period start time and the end time has to be set. And if you look at the picture to the right, this one right here, the use for daily box has to be checked and the counts for ADA has to be checked. And if you'll notice that we have set the used for daily attendance, the beginning of the day is 730 and our end of our day is 215. So that is the complete number of minutes for our day. This particular period is only five minutes long. But the number of minutes we're using for calculation is that full day, 7.30 to 2.15. So this is what a bell schedule kind of looks like in theory. Well, actually, in actuality as well. So if you click on, in your bell schedule, the regular day, period one, um, it will show you this particular edit screen. It'll tell you what the start and end date is for the time. Make sure those two boxes are checked and make sure you have the full day included for those minutes. Any questions about that part? We're good so far. All right. When we're looking at attendance, uh, I'm going to look at it from a student perspective at, for this moment, this particular page. 
So I'm going to select a student and I'm going to click the word attendance. So that's my navigation. When you're looking at this page, you have the ability to look at the daily page or the meeting page. And since we were in our preferences, we said our default page is going to be daily. So that's what I'm looking at. And we actually you think about it as uh, make sure the connections are there. So the first thing we want to make sure is that our daily attendance is the bridge. So that's where it's going to get the minutes calculated at 7.30 to 2.15. And that's where the students check in and check out is going to happen as well. It all happens on that bridge. So number two says the admin folks of your school can key in an individual attendance um, on the daily attendance page. So we know that normally teachers take attendance in and out every day. Not in and out, just in. Sorry, I said that wrong. Teachers take the attendance for the day. The admin folks, your attendance folks, whoever they may be, they can go in and modify the attendance. Whether the kid has a note, whether they arrived late, they came in from the dentist, whatever the case may be, the admins are going to go in and modify the attendance. But the, atten the admins at number three says they can also take attendance for the whole class through the teacher schedule. So a lot of times if there's a sub, the, the substitute takes paper attendance, sends it down to the office, and the admin person, whoever it may be, can go in and enter attendance for that entire class by going through the teacher schedule. So they have the ability to do all of those things. How it is connected is by that period one bridge. So right now, this particular page, if you look number four on this, in this option, the bottom box on the right, says if teachers take attendance, they take it in the bridge period only. So yeah, most of the time it's called homeroom, but it's not always. But I want you to make sure that they only take it in that bridge period. If they take it in their science class, especially if you're an elementary teacher, if you take the attendance in the science subject instead of in the overall homeroom subject class period, then it will not make it across that bridge to the, to the daily code bucket. So I want to make sure that you are putting it in the right place. So that's a training issue for your teachers. Okay, so how do we deal with the, the time in and time out? So they're tardy. Um, they may be tardy, but then maybe they've had enough minutes during the day to make them present. So we're going to talk about that. This is a scenario, this is a, a Harry Potter scenario. So I'm looking at a student, so I'm going to search for a student and open up his attendance page. In this particular scenario, the school day runs from 7.30 to 2.15. And there's a note from mom, uh, deer in the backyard this morning, she's a huge Harry Potter fan, she thought it necessary to chase the deer around the yard in the neighborhood with her wand while wearing her cape, which is a bathrobe, shouting expecto patronum, and it made her feel magical. That is the weirdest thing ever. Never saw that before, that's kind of fun. So we let our kid do it, we let them be late for school, and crazy no, but we get those, right? So how do we handle that? So you're gonna open up the student page, open up the attendance page specifically for that student, the teacher has already marked that student 2L, okay? Because that is the actual code that student was not in her class during that homeroom time, so she put in a 2L. Uh, she's not able to do anything else, so the admin person is going to enter the time. So right now on this particular attendance page, you're gonna go to the day, and if you click on the day, so that's those blue letters, those are links for the day of that week. 
it says 425 minutes. And you can tell that there isn't any time entered because that 425 is our full day if you counted all the minutes between 7.30 and 2.15. So that's how I can tell that no time was entered. I'm gonna to go to the next screen. We want the office to show in the daily attendance um, that besides the teacher entering the 2L, we wanna enter the, the time the student came in um, or and the time the student uh, leaves for the day, if it happens to be the end of the school day or not. So what happens is you're going to click on the H for Thursday or whatever day it happens to be, and this particular page is going to open up. And when you're looking at it, you have the ability to put in a time in and a time out. So the time in, when you're seeing the clock, you can change that time. It has to be in this format. So if you don't put it in that format, it gets really cranky. So make sure the time in um, is the actual time the student arrived in school. And the time out, if they're going to stay to the end of the day, then you mark it the end of your day. If you want to exclude that time from the total minutes, you can check that box but you don't need to check it because we're already using the time in and time out for our automatic calculations stuff. So I'm gonna leave it in uh, 8.30 and 2.45. So this is kind of a bigger picture. So on Monday, there's 330 minutes now because the student came in at 8.45 and left at 2.15. So it no longer says 425 minutes, it now says 330. A lot of people do use the comment, note from mom or whatever the case may be, went to the dentist, whatever it happens to be. Comments are really good. The teacher can view them and the office staff can view them. Now you cannot change what the teacher puts in as a comment but you can see it. And they, the teacher, cannot change what you put in as a comment, but they can see your comment. So they're view access for other people. Um, I don't think there's any other thing I need to tell you about this particular place. Make sure the, the attendance code is correct. 2L is your unexcused tardy. That's still the case. And that's what it looks like at the end of our putting in, coming in late. Any questions about that? Um, there is a question, or, and I'm not sure we you know the answer to this one. Are there any programs similar to Identa a kid uh, that will automatically con connect with Power School so that we don't have to manually enter this information? Okay, Dodi, I don't. Uh, I don't have all the specifics about the Identikid. I know that I talked about, I talked with them a little bit at uh, PSUG, uh, but I don't have that information. I don't know if it is a uh, approved third party vendor. Um, so I don't have that information. I only know of the ones that have been approved by DPI. So. I would imagine that somewhere, someplace, there's something that that could connect, but there's a lot of hoops you're going to have to jump through to make that happen first. Thank you. Okay, so now that we did it on the particular page within PowerSchool, what's going on in the database? So kind of the, the background stuff for you a little bit more geeky folks. Uh, when the daily attendance is recorded, so it really is being recorded in a meeting record. So it's in the meeting bucket, that homeroom space bucket. And that is a, a spot in the attendance table. Then the bridge actually takes that meeting 
record and throws it into the daily mode bucket. And that's a different record for the period that we specified as that bridge. So it, even though it's a daily code, we're actually doing it as a meeting attendance and then we're throwing it into the daily bucket. The synchroni synchronization part happens um, when we are going from the meeting to build of the daily. So you need to be careful when we are actually doing this because just like I said before, if the teachers have entered the attendance in the period that is not the bridge period, you're gonna get daily absences from those meeting entries. So you have to be careful. When we're doing daily, there's still that synchronization. It's gonna look at those absences from those other meeting periods when we really only wanna look at it from the, uh, the bridge period, our homeroom, whatever period we chose to make it um, to have our daily attendance be taken. When we're doing a synchronization from daily uh, to build the meeting, so think about this. If the daily absent code is considered absent, so whichever one of those absent codes um, that they chose, it will mark all the periods absent for that day. That's kind of what it does in the background. If the daily code is absent, it's only going to mark the bridge period if we are a daily, a daily school. If you are a period by period school and the daily code is absent, it will mark all of the periods absent for that day. So the synchronization kind of um, it does stuff in the background whether you're seeing it or not. So we are talking about daily. So as long as our teachers are putting attendance in the correct bridge attendance period, then we're okay. It's actually gonna take that out of that meeting period and throw it into daily. Is that clear as mud? Okay, hearing none, so carried. Is there a way to take meeting attendance in a daily attendance school? Well, kind of like just what I said. I mean, you could, but it defeats the entire purpose. Um, and it also depends on your preferences if you chose the two-way sync. So the two-way sync so if you are a daily school and you're taking the attendance in that token uh, homeroom period, it's gonna take that and throw it into the daily code. If you have taken attendance in every other period of the day, hmm. So two different buckets and it's going to take your daily attendance for everything okay. else as long as you mark that. There are, you have to keep them in sync and it's a lot of work involved to do those. And yeah. there are some people, and you cannot do attendance tracking right. if you do that. Right. And that is usually what most people want to do, so. That's the biggest thing. And thank you for reminding me about that part. So, correct. So if you're gonna do meeting and daily, you cannot use the attendance tracking um, method. If you're uh, not going to, then yes, you could possibly take period by period attendance in addition to the daily attendance. But just remember that the only period that's gonna to count toward your daily code is that one that's taken in that uh, homeroom type period. Does that answer your question, Sheila? So if you're taking it period by period, you could use that so the teachers have an idea how many times a kid is missing a class, that kind of, um, or a particular subject. Um, so you could use that for other purposes, uh, but know that the, the only one that counts for the day is that one taken in that token period. Our early college is a daily attendance school. The teachers like to take meeting attendance as well. 
Yeah, and I think that does work. But re just be really careful about the synchronization. Okay, so we've gone through the whole mess. We've trained our teachers to take attendance, take attendance, take attendance every day. Should the sync not be on two-way? Mm. Are you talking about if you're doing... If you're going to do both, Sheila? Um, yeah. The problem with the sync being on for meeting attendance is that they may have been absent first period, but then they came in on second period. So right. if the sync is on and you say they're present, then that may take away that period. Of t would that take away your first period attendance? So that's a good question, Sheila. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to ask Walt. I know he is he is my attendance go to person, uh, and ask about that. Because I actually had another person email me with that same type of question. Should that sync only be one way instead of two way? It should only be two way with daily attendance. Only I do know that one way is for uh, period attend meeting. Really? Mm -hmm. I thought that's the opposite. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna get that straightened out, and um, Sheila just. Send me a, a, a quick email so that I, I don't lose track of that, please. I'd appreciate that. Uh, the data managers add the tardies and early leavers. True, that is that's still true. That that would be they would be changing the tardies and the early leavers um, in the daily code. They're not going to be doing that in the period by period code as as. Uh, not co I should be saying code. I should say period of the day. They should be doing it in the the daily, the token daily period. All right. Definitely need to know before you get too far into the school year, for sure. Okay. So we bugged our teachers to make sure they take attendance, and now we have uh, the the problem where the kid comes in and we have to change their attendance. So there's a few different things that are happening. So this particular scenario, if the student checks out early, you're going to put the start of the school day as the time in and the time they left as the time out. Kind of makes sense, right? If the student arrived late and left early, the time in would be when they arrived and the time out would be when they left instead of being the end of the school day. If the student arrived late and left for a time and came back in, you're going to have two different time entries. So you have the first time entry is going to be when he arrived to school, so he arrived late, and then the time out would be the time that they left. And then you're going to put another record in where the time in is going to be when they when they came back to school and then the second time out would be the end of the school day. So those are the three different um, ways that you're going to be able to change attendance or that you should be changing attendance, A, B, and C. So this is what scenario one looks like as far as the screens go. So scenario one, the tardy code 1L and 2L are considered present codes. So you're going to go into the nav, uh, your navigation is going to be going under school, clicking attendance, looking at attendance codes. And if you're looking at the attendance code, that's only what this screen is showing you. What does the attendance code of um, 2L actually looks like. So it's considered a present code, but it's also considered tardy. That box is checked. Um, I need to put my glasses on, is what I mean. All right. So when you're looking at how that attendance code is there, 
This is only for your viewing pleasure because this is not going to be editable and should not be editable by you guys. Uh, the only option that we really need to know is are we allowing the teachers to to use it? So the 1L and 2L are considered present codes with the tardy box checked. When I'm looking at a student attendance record, that's what that second um, box looks like. And this is the Friday of the week between 9, 8, and 9, 14. So this is that Friday. The student came in late and stayed for the rest of the day. So he came in at 8.45 and he, the end of the day is 2.50. That was scenario A. Scenario B, um, on Monday, 9.15, he came in at 7.45, but he left early. So he is uh, leaving at 1.50. So he still has 365 minutes, but it was a different portion of the day. And C, he left and came back. So he came in at 7.45. He left at 10 minutes to 1. He came back at 10 minutes to 2 and stayed for the rest of the day. So he still ended up with 365 minutes, but again, the times uh, were just uh, different scenarios. And Friday, he was there the entire full day, 425 minutes. So this 2L was not, did not have any time um, attached to it. Any questions about that? So that's scenario number one. Attendance codes themselves. So I just said this is for your viewing pleasure and we don't want you to change them. We're not letting you, we don't want you to add any additional ones. So these have been pushed down to you. It should tell you in this particular um, column whether it's going to be counted in our ADA calculation. The next column over will tell you whether it is a present type code or an absent type code. And the actual code itself is the first column and then the description for that code. If you want to look at the attendance and the student accounting manual, it's listed here as a link it's the SASA -S uh, PDF, and you can find it there and, and read it, and it talks about the actual accounting from a DPI standpoint. The absent code, codes must be approved by DPI and MAP to reporting codes. If the LEA creates an attendance code that's not approved and DPI and by DPI and MAP accurately, for lawful or unlawful reporting, the school's PMR will be incorrect. And you could be uh, losing some funding. So definitely, if you're not happy with those attendance codes, first check that manual uh, and then go talk to Ozella. Chapter two is the chapter that you really want to pay specific attention to in that manual, because that's related directly for data manager's information, just so you know. Cool. Nice. That's something I was told when I started out as a data manager, learn chapter two. Chapter two, awesome. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so do not, uh, do change, select teachers assign. And that's based on a, an LEA decision. So we recommend from DPI that the teachers can only use present and unexcused absence and unexcused tardy. So those are the three that DPI recommends. But if your LEA said, yeah, we let them use a couple other things, that is the only thing that you can change in any of your attendance codes. Okay, cool. Uh, it's about five after 10, we're gonna get there. Okay, so where is the field trip code? 
Students are off campus on a field trip, and I really want to mark that in attendance. So this is kind of a, a workaround that will enter a field trip in the comment. So there really is not a code that is field trip. Um, are they ever going to change that? It keeps that? Coming, up, coming up, but they never approve it. Adults don't okay. want us to approve it. Okay. So it's not a valid uh, attendance code, so we definitely have to do it via a comment. So the navigation, how do you get there and what do you do? You start at your start page, you select um, only the students that need this comment. So this particular navigation says select all students and then uh, the bottom option says select by hand and then uncheck everybody and only check the ones that need this field trip comment. You're going to go under the functions to update selection and then choose the function attendance change. Let me go to the next page. So when you're in there and you, uh, you're in the uh, attendance change page, you're going to first set the date of the field trip. So you're going to put in the date. And you're going to set the period that the students uh, need the comment for. So what periods of the day? Maybe you're just going to put it in the daily code. You could put it there in the daily bridge period. Or you can put it in the periods that the kids are actually gone. Uh, the scan, uh, codes to scan for, you usually set that to all. And then the attendant code, attendance code, you're going to set to present. They may be absent from Mr. Wright's class, but they are present and accounted for in Mrs. Matthews' class for the field trip. The overwrite option. If you're entering this for past dates, choose don't overwrite. So it won't change any codes that have already been entered but you do want to put in the comment. So that's where we're putting our field trip is in the comment. Make sure the dates are right and the number of students um, selected is correct before you hit submit. So make sure that the dates are right. You're going to choose don't overwrite. Uh, and then you're going to submit it, and you will see that there is a blue uh, talk bubble, a blue bubble, telling you that a comment has been entered. And the Power Teacher, the, the teachers can see that in their Power Teacher, or you can see that on the attendance page for the students. As a teacher, uh, for a teacher to look at it, they're going to click the chair. They can hover on it, or they could click it. Either way. All right. Uh, Carolyn Buffalo. By changing the attendance code to present, I'm hoping that will prevent teachers from changing it to absent. Is this correct? That is true. What, if you change a code, a teacher cannot edit or change what you have done. So, yes, that is definitely true. Um, but just be careful when you do that because then you're stuck at always making the changes in that future for that child. So you can do that, but know that you're going to be responsible for that forever and ever and again. So that's changing, um, that's putting a comment in uh, a particular day. I want to talk about changing multiple days of attendance. So we're not going to just go into one student for one day. Now we're going to change multiple days. So when you're doing it for a single student, so if a single student is going to be gone for multiple days, you're going to open up the student page. And on the left-hand side, you're going to choose the attendance 
icon. And then when you're looking at his daily attendance page, you're going to click in the right-hand area, the change multiple days link or button. So this is kind of really a, a full screen. It kind of um, has a lot to it, but it shows you exactly what needs to be done. You're doing it for multiple days. So make sure that you have the from and the to dates accurate. It's gonna be inclusive of those dates. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna to need to decide if you want to send for all the codes or just the certain codes. So what do I mean by that? So between the dates of the 15th and the 19th, do I want to look for any of the codes that exist, which means I'm gonna scan them all, and I want to change whatever it finds to a 1G, an educational opportunity. If I want to only say between the 15th and the 19th, I only want you to search for any uh, 2L or any present codes. You can pick and choose what codes you want to scan for those days between the 15th and the 19th. And then when it finds just those codes, we want to change it to the 1G. And then you have the ability to choose whether you're going to overwrite what you find, if there's something there, or don't overwrite. If you say don't overwrite, whatever code that was there, it's going to um, leave it, and it's only going to change the ones that don't have anything in that particular code for that particular day. The, the number five, it says, is optional, and that's the comment area. So you can do that. Uh, the student went on a family vacation or whatever the case was. They went to uh, South Carolina to see the eclipse. Okay. What it looks like in the student page when you're done is what that bottom box is showing you. So from 2.15 to 2.19, it'll look like zero minutes and 1G, because we didn't change any time, but we did change the code. And that's for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, just for all of those days. Because I chose to scan all of the codes for those five days and regardless of what was in those codes before, I'm changing them to 1G. How are we doing? Okay. Good. So what if we want to change multiple students' attendance? So this is where we get into some inclement weather days and stuff. So Marsha, this is where I'm gonna come back uh, around to your question. It works exactly the same way as the other slides that I showed you, only this time you're going to create a group of students. So you're gonna make the group of students that you wanna change your current selection. And then you're either gonna choose, excuse me, whew, attendance change from the group functions, or you can navigate to special functions, group functions, attendance change. So there's a couple different ways to get there, but it kind of uh, goes to the same place. So the first thing we have to do is make sure we have the group of students selected. That's our first, uh, our first must. And then when we say change daily attendance, you're gonna come to the change codes and it looks like the same exact screen. Only this time, if you look right here under value, it'll say the selected number of students. And then you're gonna pick the days that you want to change the code for, and whether you're gonna to want to scan all of those codes or only look for a particular code that you wanna change. 
and what do you want to change it to, 1G, and whether you're going to overwrite it. So no matter what you found, you're going to put a 1G. So maybe you should be picky here when you're doing that, because if a student already has um, a different code of, um, I don't know, uh, in-school suspension or whatever those codes are, you don't want to overwrite that with a 1G. So you may be picky and choosy when you're doing um, multiple student changes. And then you can uh, put in a comment if you like. Okay, attendance grid report. So I'm going to show you, and, and I haven't forgot about you, Marcia. Um, I will get to that that area that you talked about. I do want to show, it is quarter after, so I want to make sure I get through all these links. So the attendance grid report and class rosters using Power Teacher Gradebook. So these are the folks that are not going to PT Pro. This is the document. It's a QRD that will help you in uh, using the attendance grid, and you can do it as an attendance grid or just a plain old class roster. And this page actually, um, that I'm sorry, that document will help you through that QRD to make it happen. And because I don't have a QRD quite yet for the PT Pro folks, you're going to do it the same way by going using the reports charm and you're going to choose the student roster report. So it's reports, charm, student roster. And when you're looking at the criteria, the report options, you're going to select the class that you want. You're going to choose how you want to sort it. But this is where you're going to add the columns. It automatically has a student name here. So you can add columns. Either uh, you can name them. Uh, day one, day two, you can actually put in dates uh, for the first week of school, or you can just leave the column headings blank and just have blank columns there. Or you can, and you can also definitely add their student number and things like that. So that's how you're going to be able to do it, or teachers can do it through Power Teacher Pro. And this is the document that will help you to create, have the teachers do it through their own PTG gradebook. Okay, inclement weather days. And I need to go back and read uh, Marsha's question again. She wants to know about how to do the, um, uh, how, can you go over how, if we have a two hour delay, uh, what would the attendance conversion look like? Okay, so first, first of all, for a two hour delay, you're going to have a separate bell schedule that says two hour delay. And it's gonna have obviously a reduced number of minutes in that uh, delay. So your attendance conversion, you're gonna have that two hour delay attached to it. So let me see if I can get back to you. Let me get, go to Power School. All right, so I'm back in PowerSchool. I'm going to click on Attendance Conversion. So this is still the same. So this full day conversion, if I click two years, this says regular day. So what you're going to do is create another bell schedule and make sure it is labeled to our delay. Marcia, something, something this morning. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to my bell schedule to make sure that you have uh, have one there. So it's under school. And I'm going to Bell Schedule. Uh, 
and there's only one schedule here. So I would click new and I would create a two hour delay schedule. If I could type my conversion method. So this is where I'm going to choose full day. And now this bell schedule will be um, in that list under that attendance conversion method. I am not going to choose this bell schedule to be my counter of the minute because it's a reduced number. So I definitely don't want that to be the case. And I'm going to click submit. And obviously, I need to put in all my times and periods and all that stuff in there. But I, I just want to show you how that looks. So now if I go back to my attendance conversions, If I click on the two tiers again, I'm going to scroll to the bottom and now my two hour delay schedule shows up because it is another bell schedule, but obviously I have some problems in it because I don't have any minutes or periods defined, but at least it's there so it will be um, part of that attendance conversion. Does that speak to it? Marsha, okay. All right, let me go back to my webinar. Oh, wrong one. Huh, you don't want to see that one. How about that one? Oh, much better. Thank you. All righty. So inclement weather days, you clear, you have to clear the attendance from that day because uh, every evening and uh, during so one of the night processes, it um, establishes that next day as a day of attendance. So you, a lot of times that happens before we figure out that we are going to have a bad weather day. So if you have to, you're going to go to school, go to the start page, select all of your students, go to attendance, absentee report, attendance mode daily. You're going to bullet the selected number of students so we have all of them. So that's the, the button, the radio button we want to select. Select all codes, set the date that you want to uh, scan, we're going to scan all the periods, and you're going to go basically go in and choose the function of attendance change and change every student to present. Because basically that clears all of that attendance from that bad weather day. Because changing them to present makes that a, a non-attendance day. There isn't, because we're negative attendance, it, it, it doesn't see present as an actual attendance code, so to speak. So we definitely have to make sure that we get rid of all that attendance on that weather, bad weather day. That's the first step. Then you need to ask, um, are those days going to be forgiven? Are we going to make them up on another day? Are we not going to make them up? Um, you're going to leave the forgiven day uh, in session on the calendar setup, but you're going to change the type of that day to a weather closure, bad weather day or whatever the type of day that you have set up. And if you um, take out the in session box on a forgiven day, it can cause the system to calculate never uh, negative attendance. So we want to, you're not going to make them up on any other day. So you're going to leave that day in session, but you're changing the type to a weather closure. And that's how it knows that it is a different kind of day. And that day is automatically set not to take attendance. 
So you're still going to leave the in session there, that box there, but we've set up the day type of weather closure to be to not count for attendance. So if that kind of is clear as mud, right? Um, let me know if you have if you want me to explain that again. If you are going to make up the day, set that new in session day in your calendar. So if you're going to have a Saturday day, you're going to have to go to that Saturday in the calendar setup and check that box as a new in session day. So you can always set, uh, you always can go and set up a remedy ticket um, in the remedy portal and they will help you through that. There are documents on how to deal with um, bad weather days and how to work those out. Um, we can definitely work through that uh, with you. This particular uh, webinar is just kind of saying the big picture. How do you do it? Definitely make sure you clear your attendance. And then your next decision is what do I do if we, the day is a forgiven day or I have to make it up? Okay, there's a few of these pages for tips. So I wanna make sure I get through. I only got about four minutes left. So when you see a dash on the attendance screen, that will indicate that the school was not in session or that the student was not enrolled in that class on that date. If you see a dot on the attendance screen, it indicates that class or that actual section does not take attendance, does not take place on that day. So if you're an A day, B day schedule, you will see a dot on the opposite day that class only meets on A days. If you're posting attendance setting changes, after you make any sort of change, so this is where it's telling you, you need to um, go into your attendance settings and run the refresh premier attendance view data. And if you're a daily school, you're also going to run recalculate. So I put a big box next to this because we've already been telling people, do not run that refresh premier attendance view data. Uh, and there is a caveat that says during the day while attendance is taken. That is the big thing. We would prefer you to wait for the nightly process to happen because it will do that automatically for you. But if you had to change any kind of settings, any kind of preferences, you're going to need to recalculate your minutes and refresh the view. So if something happens and you really have to do it that day, you cannot wait overnight. You definitely have to wait until the end of the day when all the attendance is done being taken. We really want you to wait until the nightly process happens. In order to do any of those special functions, it is found under special functions and navigating to the attendance. So there's the dash and the, the dash and the dot. And please don't make those, please don't run that refresh. Let the night, let the night happen. Uh, some gotchas. Every student has to have a valid FTE on their current enrollment record. So that's why those searches are going to be helpful for you. I'd run them periodically. Attendance codes with no category set or too many set um, is, is kind of going to screw up the attendance tracking. So if you are using attendance tracking, make sure um, you have just those one or two categories set up, absences, um, illnesses, whatever one of the two categories that you have set. Exclude from attendance on a, sec on a section. This does not mean you don't have to take attendance. It means that the attendance taken is not going to count for in ADA. Okay does not mean you don't have to take it. It means that when attendance is taken, we're not going to count that toward our average daily attendance. 
and we really only use that excluded from attendance on non-instructional type sections. Definitely don't make the homeroom exclude from attendance if you're a daily attendant school. <laughs> That's just going <laughs> to not help you at all. You're not going to have any attendance at all. Okay. Counts for ADA and bell schedules should be checked in all periods except any non-instructional periods. If you schedule lunch and you schedule um, non-instructional time. So make sure that it counts for ADA in everything except those areas. Uh, bell schedule periods with uneven times in meeting school attendance. So I'm not going to get too much with that with you guys. Uh, your special day bell schedule that you don't have all the periods in that day. Make sure that those are set correctly. They have their own attendance conversion possibly. You just talked about that. that. I, I did. did. I mm -hmm. did. You sure did. All belt schedules should have the use for PMR and SAR calculation in minutes. So we definitely like them to be a no. Um, I, I don't like leaving it blank. So I would really, I would prefer you that you go into every one of your belt schedules and either say yes or no. I don't like it when it's blank. And make sure one of them obviously says yes. Because you're right, what you said earlier, it'll take anyone that not not marked no and add them all together and take the yeah. average. Yeah. And you can really skew your numbers that way. Yep, not right. Okay, some more gotchas. Just because a student um, isn't marked absent doesn't mean the system won't calculate an absent if the student doesn't have enough instructional minutes in a day. Okay, so we've already said then in our conversion up to 185, 185 minutes and my particular school, that the student is going to be considered absent. So just kind of remember that. Report card cumulative absences. If a student doesn't have enough scheduled minutes to reach that conversion to give him um, the absent or present code, the system will make them absent. So really what you should do is um, make sure you look at your transfer info page and make sure your current enrollment dates and, uh, and make sure they're, the, they're correct, especially when you're looking at all of your enrollment dates. All of those dates in classes are correct. All right. I know I'm late. Uh, I'm still going to take you in a couple extra minutes here. I'm so sorry. But data access tags, these are cool ones to use. So they're the ones that have the asterisks and there's special tags that you can use in reports. So kind of look at them. Um, it's daily minutes, daily absences, and um, or the, the DA versus the DABS, daily absence, uh, for particular dates. These are cool ones to use if you're going to be writing reports, just kind of for your FYI. Links. So there is a complete attendance page within NCSIS, and it's at ncsis-sys.org uh, slash attendance. There is a, an updating attendance QRD, and those do have underscores in there. And there's a sign-in, sign-out uh, QRD. So I'm hoping those will help you. All righty. home base. Uh, support center. We encourage you to put in a ticket through the portal. Uh, if you don't know how to create a really good ticket, there is a video and there's a PowerPoint on helping you through that process. But the big W's, who, what, where, when, uh, those are really important stuff to have in those tickets. Okay. Uh, I'm done. I'm a little bit late. I thank you for staying with me after the time. Is there any questions I can answer quickly from uh, what we've gone through today? All right. So this is being recorded. I'm going to stop the recording and it will get posted for uh, sometime this week. It will end up uh, getting posted. I appreciate your uh, assistance and any questions that you had. I hope we were able to answer them. Thank you, Doris. And I'm going to.